guys, it's Deneen again, and I am here working with one of the 12 by 12 papers in the Allie Edwards Punctuation Quarterly Scrapbook Kit. Um, and this spread is actually super, super simple, um, but I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of um, maybe a little bit insight into how I am going to make this particular spread with this particular paper on Photoshop elements or in Photoshop elements before I get to my desk. Now, this paper is 12 by 12, and I want it to be cut down to 7 by 8 and a quarter. So I am going to use my crop tool, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to make sure that my dimensions are 7 and 8 and a quarter. So then what I'll do is I'll go in, and I'm just going to anywhere randomly within this paper, just start dragging. And you can see by the black box there, as it's going, you're kind of measuring where do you get to the seven by eight and a quarter. So you can see it's increasing 6.7, 6.8. And I'm just gonna slowly continue to go and very, very carefully just get it to seven by 8.25. So sometimes with my shaky hands, it takes me a little bit longer to do this. Sometimes it's super simple. Um, I'm not, uh, Ah, there you go, right there. And as soon as that is exactly where I want it, at seven by eight and a quarter, I'm gonna let go. And there is the, there are the dimensions because I am going to actually use the physical paper and I'm going to run that through my printer. Um, if you are not using Photoshop Elements and you're just interested in um, handwriting your journaling on this, you can completely skip this part. Um, if you're just curious to see how I'm going to do this, you could stick around. Um, but I always kind of feel like giving you a little bit of insight, um, you know, might either, you know, have you doing the same thing I'm doing or maybe spark your creativity to do something similar or something different. So what I'll do now is I can move this box around. And so I'm going to kind of move it around to decide, you know, what part of the paper do I want to use for this? And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I also have a, a small piece of transparency that I use in order to kind of know, you know, what part of any 12 by 12 paper that I want to use. I use that piece of transparency on a... Um, physical paper and I'll show you that when I get back to my desk but for now because I plan on printing this out through my printer I need to resize this digital paper um, exactly the way I want to so I'm just going to kind of move it around a little bit here just kind of going around um, not really sure let's see looking to have some spaces um, and I'll kind of show that to you once I get where I want to go it looks like I might want it right about there. Maybe a little bit more this way. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I have something in mind um, with some embellishments and such that I want to do. So I know um, where I kind of sort of want everything to fall. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to um, I'm just going to drop this. OK, I'm just going to drop this right there. And now I know that what is inside this box here is going to be where I want to um, put my journaling and my embellishments. And then I'll go ahead and commit that. And here is the paper as I want to use it, okay? So what I'm going to do is, first of all, because I know this is going to go on my album, it's going to have some holes in it. I'm going to pull a guide over to, you know, approximately a half an inch. Usually it's a little bit less, a little bit more. Um, I'm not picky about it, just as long as I know I cannot do any journaling past this line. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to make a text box. And just, again, I think the first thing, bef actually, before I do the text box, I should go into Microsoft Word. And I think I've told you guys before that I, I try to do most of my journaling in Microsoft Word first in order to do the spell check. And so this is, this is uh, my journaling. I have already done the spell check on it. I've read it out loud to myself, which if you've seen my... Um, authentic storytelling. I think the first class I go through how, you know, how I do my journaling. And there's a, a whole lesson on, you know, 
authentic journaling and how I kind of just start typing and then you know, when I'm done, I just read it out loud to myself, something that I tell my students to do all the time. Read it out loud. What does it sound like? Um, and then you can change things up and, and do like, you know, a heavier edit on it if you want to change some of the words and add, you know, some visual words and such into there. So if you're interested in that kind of lesson, that's definitely something you could check out in my authentic storytelling. But for this one, I already have the journaling done. I've read it out loud. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this top section, this first paragraph. I'm going to do a copy. Then I'm going to go back over here to my Photoshop elements and I will do a box. So I'm just going to kind of do a box, you know, just random because I'm going to do some pasting inside of the box. I know what size I usually use is, let's see, it's usually about 12 point, um, usually about 11 point letting. And then I always leave my tracking at negative 25. I like my letters just a wee bit closer together. And then I'll go inside of here with my cursor and I'll do command V and I will paste it in there. All right, let me just zoom in super quick here to show you. So you can see here that this box over here, right where I'm showing you here, lets me know that it has cut off some of my words. So what that means to me now is that I need to kind of stretch this box either this way or down this way. So I'm going to try down this way first and see what happens. Is it bringing the rest of my words? Yeah, there they are. Okay, so you see how I had to stretch this box in order to fit all of the words. Um, and I don't know, I don't think I really need to go over this way. Um, maybe I could. Let's, let's see what happens if I pull it more over this way. Let's see, do I like that? Um, yeah, I think I might like it. Let's commit that change there. Okay, so now I have my journaling in place. Um, I might, I don't know, might want to pull this a little bit closer to that line there. And I think, yeah, I think I kind of like that. I think it looks pretty good. Maybe, maybe just a wee bit over this way. I'm just being picky now, of course, because that's just me. But probably right about there, I'll place it. And then I could always move this line over a little bit just so that it goes right up against there so that my bottom boxes, um, oh, that's not what I wanted, so that my bottom boxes could line up exactly with that line as well. So let's just bump this right over there. Perfect, all right. So looking at the, oop, see, now that's not what we wanted. All right, looking at the space between the top and the bottom, right? So there's my journaling. That's the space between these quotation marks and these quotation marks. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so I'm going to zoom out to show you again how I laid that down. Then I'm going to go back into Microsoft Word. I'm going to choose my second paragraph here. I'm going to copy that, go back into Photoshop Elements, zoom in a little. I'm always continually zooming in and out. And then sometimes what I'll do is I will actually go and take this box and I will duplicate it just, just because I like the way it's been sized already. And I'll move it down here, okay, and kind of line that up the way I want it. Okay, get that in line there. A little bit too much that way. Let's move that there. Okay. And then I will double click, highlight all of the text and paste my new text into it. And that kind of makes sure that the boxes are as close to the same size as I want them to be. So let's just commit that. And then we're gonna zoom out. And then I'll take a look at this. And I think I like it. All right, so I have my space here for my hole punches. I have a line. Everything looks like it's lined up nicely. Now. This is the part that, let me just explain. I'm going to cut my 12 by 12 paper to seven by eight and a quarter, and I am going to run that seven by eight and a quarter piece into my printer. Now that is complicated, and it does not need to be that complicated. Sometimes I just like to experiment and things think about how things could be. But let me give you some tips here. Number one, you have the digital version of this paper um, automatically when you buy the kit. So 
if you wanted to and if you weren't worried about using the physical paper and if you have a cardstock that you could print this out on, you could 100% just hit print and print this exactly how it is, okay? Um, number two, if you want to use the physical paper but you don't want to go through the fuss of cutting it down to this size and running it through your printer, you could always just hide this background and print this out on sticker paper and then you can just take the stickers and put it right exactly where you want it on the physical paper okay so there are options here you don't necessarily need to do this exactly the way that I do it I just like to throw this out there for you so that you know there are options and some people like to experiment with running physical papers through their printers other people think that's just a big pain you know that's going to be up to you but i'm letting you know the different choices that you have all right so my choice here is going to be to go ahead now remember this is seven by eight and a quarter so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to print this so i'm going to go to file and print and you'll see the only thing I'm printing now is are the, the two paragraphs. I have my printer chosen. I am going to run a seven by eight and a quarter piece of copy paper through my printer so that the only thing that prints out on that copy paper is are these two paragraphs. Okay, so let me just kind of show you um, in page setup here. Um, you'll see... Um, uh, paper size right here. I already have a pre-designed seven by eight and a quarter page made and you can check out my video from the saver story kit. I think that's the video where I show you how to create those special sizes. Um, media and quality I want normal um, but I do want my feed to be from the rear tray. That's the tray that I use. This will be completely up to you depending on what printer that you use. Quality, normal, and everything else. Okay, so now you'll see that that page size went to look exactly like the seven by eight and a quarter. So what I'll do here now is I'll hit print. I will put a seven by eight and a quarter piece of copy paper into the feed of my printer, and I am going to print this out on that copy paper okay so let's go ahead and do that and um, yeah I will um, I'll meet you back at my desk and then I'll show you what I do from there so here I am with my 12 by 12 paper and my 7 by 8 and a quarter inch copy paper with the journaling printed on it so you may not be able to tell here but with the light above my head, I can see all of those quotation marks right through that copy paper. And all I'm going to do is just move this around a little bit until I'm happy where it's at, matching the way I had it sized in Photoshop Elements. I'm going to use a little bit of adhesive, temporary adhesive, just to put that copy paper on top. And then I'm just going to cut the 12 by 12 paper right around that copy paper right around it. So it's going to be exactly as I had it in Photoshop Elements and exactly how I want it for printing onto the paper. So here is the paper and the temporary adhesive actually comes off just with your finger. So I just kind of brushed that off, take that to my printer, and there we have me printing on that paper. So remember what I had said to you if you watched the Photoshop Elements part. You can put your journaling on with your, you know, with a pen. You can do it with sticker paper or you could print it right digitally from your Photoshop Elements. This is how I chose to do it because I just have fun doing this. It's like a challenge to me. So you don't have to make it complicated if you're not interested. Alrighty, so I punched my holes. I pulled out a stamp. Uh, from the community story stamp um, and I'm kind of weighing the odds between abandoned coral and barn red which is down there in the right side and I like the coral but it was a little too light and I wanted something a little brighter so I think I'm going to start stamping here but then I changed my mind because I wanted to pick out my embellishments first and so I have a little box here of hearts 
I have some pleather hearts, some vellum hearts, and then some fabric hearts. And I was thinking that I would place these hearts in certain spots between the quotation marks. And so here I'm just kind of putzing around. Um, I know I kind of want a pink, maybe pink and red, or maybe even the pink and orange color scheme to go along with the black and white. Um, but I'm just not quite sure. And I think what ended up kind of swaying me in the direction that I went was that I liked um, I liked the fact that the pleather hearts, because you'll see that's what I end up choosing. I like the fact that the pleather hearts have sentiments on them. Um, I could have very easily stamped sentiments on these vellum pieces, or I could have put phrase stickers on the fabric ones. But for some reason, these particular pleather hearts were just calling my name. So I end up choosing them and then positioning them in uh, two spaces on the page with the journaling and then one over on the photo in order to kind of bring everything together. Um, and then after I made that decision, I go ahead and I do my stamping. So um, if I didn't already mention it, I ended up choosing the Barn Red Stamp uh, Distress Oxide Ink. And the phrase says, I feel less alone because of you. So that's the phrase that I'm going to end up stamping. And here you just see me kind of playing around with positioning and making my decisions. And um, then I'll get out my stamp. And I'm just going to go ahead and it's going to go off of the page in a few places. So I'll do my test stamp and then I'll use this paper to kind of put it underneath so I don't get ink all over my piece of glass. Um, just to safeguard, it's not like it won't come off, but it just makes more sense for me just to put that underneath there. Um, so yeah, so you can see here that I am stamping that same phrase. My original thoughts were that, oh, maybe I'll pick out three different phrases, but I kind of just liked this phrase so much and I thought, why not just repeat it, right? One of the things that, uh, you know, a lot of us like to do is just repeat elements, right? You can see here the repeated elements of the quotation marks. Um, and you'll see the repeated elements of the uh, pleather hearts and then the repeated elements of this particular phrase. Um, one thing you'll notice is that at the bottom in that open space, it's still open. I accidentally almost stamped there. So there's a little bit of pink or barn red ink there, but fortunately my pleather hearts will cover right over that. So I'm just kind of figuring out here which heart I want in which spot. Uh, this one down here at the bottom says yes, and I'm just going to adhere that there. Um, this one at the top, I chose this one for the top because it was kind of flatter and it wouldn't hang off the top of the page. So that's why I chose that one. And then over here, I kind of decide that story is the one I want to go with. So they're all kind of like a different shade of pink. Um, got to get the date on there. Always got to get the date on there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and adhere down that story heart first and then once I get that in place I will center the date stamp right below there so that um, it's it's kind of part of the elements right part of the design element is that date stamp so I'll go ahead and do that and then once I'm done you'll see that I end up saying okay I'm happy but then you'll see I also made some additional changes as well so here you're going to see that to each of the pleather hearts I added a black tiny brad and then I also went ahead and added three um, white phrase stickers with black words on them. I just love how the black and the white and these colors just kind of go together. I just, I don't know, I just sometimes you know I just kind of keep going and this, this just spoke to me. So that's what I went ahead and did there. Those were the changes this time. For those of you who like to read the journaling, this is the top paragraph of journaling, kind of telling the story of this particular evening that I was out with my one of my best friends and also her husband. And then we will move on to the bottom set of journaling or the bottom paragraph of journaling. And you can get a close up there of my stamping as well as the phrase stickers that I used. And then last but not least, this is how it looks while it's sitting in my album. So again, this was kind of simple, probably didn't need much of a process video, but I, I like to do them. They're fun. And then it gives you some ideas for um, what you can do, or maybe you could modify something that I did into something totally new, right? Um, always 
different inspiration for different things. Um, but that's it, guys. Uh, thanks once again for following along with my playing around of the punctuation uh, scrapbook, quarterly scrapbook kit from Allie Edwards. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, and we'll see you guys in the next video.